Hey guys, Indie Explorer here. Today we're going back to the very beginning and discussing one of the oldest parts of Ender Lily's lore, the elusive ancients themselves. What little we know about them is found scattered throughout the game, and by piecing it all together, we can learn some pretty interesting things about their civilization. First off, we know that they had lived in the land for a very long time, judging by the number of bones found in the catacombs, which is a lot of bones. It had been hundreds of years at least, perhaps even millennia. We also know that the Ancients' culture was strongly influenced by their close proximity to the blight-filled Verboten domain underneath the kingdom, and it's certainly possible that they chose to dwell in this land specifically because of the blight. We learn from the King of the First Age that the Ancients' religion was based around the White Priestesses, who were worshipped because of the power they possessed to not only mitigate the blight's effects, but also to use its power to their advantage. So comfortable were these priestesses with the Blight that they actually lived in the Verboten Caverns themselves and applied their skills to crafting powerful artifacts such as the Aegis Curio. And why might they have been so interested in the Blight in the first place? The answer is simple. War. All signs point to the Ancients being a ruthless, warfaring nation who actively weaponized the Blight in order to conquer other peoples. These conflicts were quite likely led by the White Priestesses themselves, who were trained to be warriors as evidenced by the Last Rites ability as well as the Priestess Rings we find littered across Land's End. The description for the Weathered Necklace relic refers to legends which say the Ancients used to rule the world, and while this is almost certainly an exaggeration, the size of their empire was still quite impressive. We know that Land's End, as seen in the game, is only one of six nations that the colonists divided amongst themselves, and that the empire stretched from the coastal forests to the south, the snowy mountains to the north, the hinterlands to the east, and a desert to the west. The latter is where Melville the Fungal Sorcerer traveled in his search for a cure for the Floral Sorceress, and is also where the Western Merchant hailed from as evidenced by his selection of Arabian-looking rugs. Perhaps the most interesting part of the Ancients' culture was the Deathless Pact Ritual. Our only sources on the topic are cryptic and somewhat contradictory, so it's difficult to say for certain how the pact worked, but one possible explanation is as follows. A high-ranking priestess, likely one who had proven herself on the battlefield, would select a willing knight who had sworn her his allegiance. The two would meet in the abyssal ritual chamber, and by using some form of powerful blight magic, his soul would be extracted, killing the body but preserving him nonetheless as a deathless entity who would serve as a warder to the priestess and her descendants so long as the bloodline continued. We know that the knight was tethered to the region of his priestess and was compelled to protect the oldest living member of the bloodline, not just any member, since in the game's first ending, the Umbral Knight explains he cannot leave Land's End with Lily while Fredia remains. While the Deathless Pact may have stemmed from an interest in immortality, it seems more likely that it was simply an additional protection offered to the priestesses, who were highly valued for the reasons explained earlier. Despite the great strength of their civilization, all empires eventually fall, and the Ancients' time came when the colonists attacked at the beginning of the First Age. The Ancients' blighted warriors were able to temporarily halt the invaders' onslaught, but once the colonists' sorcerers had figured out a way to use magic to contain the blight, it was all over. The defending Ancients were forced underground into the Verboten domain where they made a final stand, and very few remained after the slaughter that took place there. The vast majority of their people were wiped out, including the White Priestesses, and the Umbral Knight explains that their homes, their families, and their honor were stolen from them, with the colonists settling into the dwellings of their vanquished foes. A small remnant did survive, likely by fleeing out into the so-called Deadlands, and it is members of this group, or rather, their posterity, whose bodies Lily finds as ancient soul pickups. Crucially, one infant priestess survived the annihilation of the Ancients, the very same who would come to be known as Nymphilia, the Priestess of Dawn. She was protected by the Umbral Knight and later raised by the colonists themselves, who would ironically come to worship the last priestess of the people they had destroyed. Well, that's all for today, and I know this topic can be confusing, so if you still have questions about the Ancients or the timeline of Ender Lilies in general, I would encourage you to check out my complete lore video, which covers this topic in way more detail. I also go over how much time had passed between the Ancients and the events of the game, which is an interesting discussion that was simply beyond the scope of this video. Anyways, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.